Welcome to Scry Babies. I'm Liz Stardust. I'm Tori of the Best. And today we're opening some Commander Masters product, and it's really cool. Today we have product given to us by Wizards of the Coast. This is a sponsored video. Thank you so much, Wizards, for giving us this product to show all of our lovely followers. I, when I heard about this set, I was immediately excited about a Jeweled Lotus. I don't know about anybody else, uh, but we've gotten a chance to look at a few of these cards and I can't believe how beautiful they are. The full art cards are some of my favorites. We're gonna show those in a second. Uh, the Profile Commanders. Profile Commanders, there's beautiful reprints in yeah. here. Uh, they really outdid themselves. So I'm excited to take a look. Uh, where do we wanna start off with first? I guess we could show the profile cards that we opened. So this first one is Zakama. I feel like Zakama was a card that really needed a reprint and the art for this is super cool. It gives me very like 90s-esque because of all the rainbows color, you know what I mean? And I think it's really fun. Yeah, it's very uh, Lisa Frank dinosaurs coming at you. I love the pink yeah. background. I also love solid color backgrounds and mm -hmm. feel like that's something that has never actually been like done before. So seeing that in this set's really cool. And it's also amazing for anybody who does content and needs to crop out pictures yeah. because you can just pop it right off of the background, which is another fun little feature there. Yeah, I run a Zakama in my Atla Palani deck and I already feel like this is gonna go in there because I just think it's way cuter. Um, the one thing I do like though is that these art cards are so unique that it inspires me to build commanders. Like I'm gonna show another one that I wasn't thinking of building before, but now I want to. Definitely. That's my favorite one too. Uh, this is your favorite one too? It's my favorite one. It's a silly goose. Literally, it is, goose. it is a silly goose. I never was like interested in Kai card, but this is one of the most beautiful pieces of art from Magic that I've seen, I think. I think so too. I actually am a sucker for like just realism sometimes in a Magic card. Like, you know, I feel like the early Magic cards were always a lot of like just animals. Mm -hmm. And then they kind of divulged into these like fantasy creatures. But to go back to just like, this is a goose. I love it. I'm here for it. The foiling on it's pretty. I've gotten my butt whooped by Kai card decks before. Uh, so like you said, I would never thought about building it until I saw that commander because it just looks so cool in the command zone. Yeah. And I think that's why they really treated these cards different because it looks really cool when he you does pop out cool. your commander like that. I am a big fan of Jess Kai in general. Like I, I tend to gravitate towards those colors. So when I saw this, I was like, okay, I might be keeping this for myself. But the foil too, the foiling on these cards is so pretty. I want to get like a very nice hard case to keep them in and keep them perfect forever. But I just think this is a really cute one and it's not one to be missed. No, definitely not. We got our favorite changeling. <laughs> He's a little shapeshifter. Morphon is a card that I feel like is a staple in a lot of five color decks and just in general. I've been trying to make like a creepy cryptid looking deck for a while and I thought about using him for five color and I didn't love the other art before, but this is kind of changing my mind. No, it's really cool. It's a, that card is like amazing, yeah. especially in any like theme deck. I have that in my slivers. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. And it reminds me of bubblegum. It does look like bubblegum. It looks like bubblegum, so I love it. He's super Hubba cute. Bubba Max. Yeah, it's like the stretchy bubblegum feel to it. And again, the foiling on it is so pretty. I really, really love these. Yeah. I would chew on that change. <laughs> <laughs> this one isn't a foil, but I feel like this is kind of a big deal. I feel like people really love Azusa, and I feel like we've seen kind of the same art for her for a long time. So this profile I thought was a really the beautiful one. The profile's great for Azusa single but looking. You know, that's her, <laughs> that's her profile pick. And she looks gorgeous. Yeah, the painting's amazing. She contoured, snatched, fully snatched. And speaking of ones that I think really deserve this as well, uh, Azami I think is absolutely beautiful. It's another good side profile. The foil on this is beautiful. And I think the use of the color but with the pinks and the blue, I think the pink is like the standout for these side profile cards too. It really is. It's yeah. a lot of neons, a lot of cool colors that I don't really see mm -hmm. on cards. Like you'll see them in highlights. You'll see like a lime green or like a bright orange or pink in a lot of like pops of color, but to actually just have it as a solid background. Yeah, I, really cool. I think it looks really pretty. I'm Last one, if this is okay with you, because it's my it's personal okay favorite. Uh, I love Slimefoot. And then when I opened this pack up, I was the most ecstatic about it. I opened a bunch of packs um, and I was not as thrilled as I was for Slimefoot. Everything else was super cool, amazing, hyped up, but this card for me was like, Chef's kiss. I think the color pattern, like the color palette on this is super fun. 
I like the use of the purples, again, with the pinks. The pinks are so pretty. And uh, yeah, he hasn't had a different art in a while other than, you know, some previous stuff, but not yeah. like an individual slime foot card. So I was really hyped on this one. No, the detail on the card's fantastic. You could see all the highlights in the mushrooms. You could see the staff easier. Uh, There's a lot of like things on slime foot I didn't really notice yeah. on the card until now. Now I can actually see like the entire cool like artistic direction for slime foot. Yeah, he's so. a fun guy. He's a fun guy. <laughs> So before we talk a little bit more about Fuller's, there's two cards that we have kind of seen a bit about. The first one is Deadly Rollick, and this is a, a, a pretty big staple, I would say, in general. Um, we didn't get a Fuller of this, but we know it exists out there, and this is one that I'm really excited that it has a reprint and a new art for it. It is. But my personal favorite in a card I feel like we both use a lot because we play a lot of red is Deflecting Swat. Yep. Uh, I love this card. I am a person who likes to foil out their decks. So for a while, this was like one of the cards that was just kind of sitting in my deck, no foil, made me sad. But now this is like one of my favorite things from this set. Look at this deflecting swat. <laughs> I love this card. Me too. The foil is gorgeous. You just got a big horrible, just absolutely slapping that spell out. <laughs> Really, really cool. And the flavor text, hold on, let's read this flavor text. It's so silly. Whimsical and fun. It says, come to slay the dragon for the good of the kingdom. How terribly predictable. What a baddie. So sassy. I really love this. This is um, definitely like a top five of the set for me. I really, really enjoyed this one. Nah, that card's sick. So one of our favorite full arts from this set is a command tower. We love it. Best card in commander, obviously. Uh, I think this one's really cool. I love the rainbow on it, and I'm just a sucker for any Command Tower art, but to see a full art like that just makes me really happy because, again, Command Tower is like a must-have in any deck, so. It is a good staple. It is a beautiful full art. I really, really enjoy this. I struggled to find one that was like fitting for my decks before, um, but as if you couldn't tell, I love rainbows, so I felt like this was a perfect card as well. I am a sucker for this one, just because I love the use of color in this. Mm -hmm. I think it looks like a museum painting, mm -hmm. and I, I love I love this. I love full art lands. I think lands are probably like my favorite cards to look at in Magic, just mm -hmm. because it really sets the entire scene where everything's going on, but the use of like soft purples and those greens and the blue, like it has contrast, it's not at all muddy, and it's just really beautiful to look at. I love the color usage on it too, and I feel like it's one of those pieces where like you could hang it in your house and it's like subtle nerdum. Like people who don't play magic might not know what it is right I have a volcanic away. island print in my bathroom. Yeah, and I feel like this is a piece where it's like, just as pretty as that, and somebody would look at it and be like, wow, that's beautiful, like where is that from? And, and they would think it's like a place yeah. in the world. It's Fiji. Yeah, it's Fiji and you wouldn't even know. Uh, again, really pretty foiling on this. I'm super excited about this card too. We love Reliquary Tower. I think why I like this Reliquary Tower so much is because it reminds me of the movie Hook. Yeah. It looks like the tower that like falls on the end because uh, it has a giant clock on it. I love it. Mm -hmm. I think it looks really it's just, I don't know, it's interesting. It's cool. I like the blues in the background. It's different the than the Reliquary tower, Towers that we had before, which I feel like I have one somewhere because we were just looking at it, but the little gears on here and the whole like stairway leading up, I think it's really pretty, but I really like these blues in the background too. It kind of gives you like, is the word homage to the previous Reliquary Tower, right? Where it's like that pretty blue thing going on, but um, this just feels like fresh and different. And I really enjoyed that as and well. I like the text boxes on these too. Yeah. You can still see the print on them very easily. Yeah, they're, they're nice and like almost transparent, but not too much. I would agree with you there. All right, everybody's favorite card, a soul ring. I think this is my favorite soul ring. I don't know. It's a good soul ring. It's like a party soul ring. I, I like it because I like when the artwork is like going into the text box on mm -hmm. the top. I don't think they ever really do much like that. So to see that's really, really cool. It almost looks like 3D. Yeah. And I don't know, it's just like, I love the use of like the white in the ring. So it shows like it's glowing. It has some little orbs around it. Don't know what's going on there, but uh, to me, into it, it. I know they're orbs, but I feel like they look like little party balloons. Like <laughs> the, the way that these almost look like little strings, it looks like it's just having a go time. And I, I like that. I know there's some uh, flavor I know there's some flavor text here from Urza, which I think is really cool as well. Um, and yeah, I, I would love this card in foil if it exists. I imagine that it does. Uh, and I think it's gonna be a cool like flavor to decks to see a soul ring like that. Yeah, full art soul ring. That's on turn one, I'm scooping. Forget it. 
So a reprint that I think was really needed are these lands. I find these to be some of the most useful lands in Magic in general. Um, getting to have like a dual land that works pretty well because- It is a dual land for commander, yeah. Yeah, and we always have two or more players, generally, most of the time, right? So it's a very useful card, but I think these are really, really fun. I like the art style for them. Again, feels like a party to me. I think commander uh, masters in itself almost feels like a big celebration of commanders. So yes. with the amount of like colors, it kind of reminds me of like a Willy Wonka-esque like party. I like that. I like yeah. Willy Wonka. It kind of is giving like streamers, banners, wacky, waving inflatable arm, flying tube man. Yeah, yeah. Come play commander here. I don't know what they're spectating there, uh, what kind of sports arena that is, but I would go. We also have reprints of the Battle Lands. We have the Undergrowth Stadium, Vault of Champions, uh, spectator seating as you saw. Again, these are basically like free dual lands for commander because it says if you have two or more opponents, tap for whatever color you want on mm -hmm. these. So they're always good. I always include them with my decks if I'm using, you know, two or more colors, which often I am. Uh, and I would suggest definitely getting some for yourself. Definitely. And speaking of mana fixing, we also got some awesome reprints of the medallions, which are super useful, especially if you're playing a three, four, or five color deck. Um, if you have like your curve on one way, I use these in a lot of my decks because they're just super easy, especially anything that splashes a color. Uh, if I have like a Simic deck, I use the Emerald Medallion or the Sapphire Medallion. They're just, they're just great, especially if you have like a high CMC cards in there. I mean, it's also just for two mana. For two, two mana. mana. Two mana, you get to cheapen your other stuff. I think that's really good. I know, if you turn one Soul Ring and pop out one of those medallions, Pretty good. They're very cute, and I like, the, I like the art on them too. I really love the art on them. They feel like, a, especially this jet medallion, is like a little spooky, and it's very much my style. This pearl medallion, I feel like you run this in Kalia, right? I do. I run the pearl medallion in Kalia. Yeah. I run the sapphire medallion. But I feel like medallion. this would look good in her. It does. It right? matches. Like the, I have the sapphire medallion in like one of my decks, and mm -hmm. it's the old one with like the shell and the pearls. I had it in Kali, I was like, this doesn't match. But I feel like the sapphire one fits so well for your merfolk, right? Because you have them pretty mermaids. Now we got the mermaids. Yeah, it feels yes. like like something that a pirate relic that you would like discover, you yes. know what I mean? Like it yes. feels like something that's just found, which actually all of them kind of feel like um, something that is found, like a rare gem, which is really nice. And I think they're showcased really well in here. They're so pretty. Look at this little guy. We don't have the ruby medallion though. We, we did not open that we one. We did yet. not open, but there's still a chance. There's still a chance. Some stuff for it's sure. a non-zero chance that I do have one in my box. <laughs> we have a lot of classic cards that I think got a really cool full art treatment. So this one is Faithless Looting. I love this card. Uh, this is a card I feel like we both use a lot in general. It's my favorite popper um, card. I was gonna say we use it in popper in our popper decks, so I'm really excited for a new art for that. I think it was needing a new art. It was. And it's just like a mischievous little devil. I love the use of color in this. Um, one thing, being a silly little guy. Yeah, I love all these little pink things. You can tell he's kind of being like a little trickster, which I think is really cute. He's just fooling around. It feels really on theme with magic, so I really love this one. Another staple that we have is Kadama's Reach, which I feel like a lot of green players are used to. We use this card a lot. And the art for this is really fun. I love the use of the brighter green in general mixed with it is really, really pretty. And it feels like it's a little claws in there. Yeah, it looks like um, there's a lot going on. Like it's something that is controlling the thing, right? Versus yeah. It. This little guy. <laughs> I like these little guys with the little, little hats. With the little back. hats. Yeah, they're really cute. I like his little talons. I know there's a lot going on here. I have to like stare at some of these cards to really see what's going on with them. But well, it says uh, the trees keep our history better than any digital device, and I think that's really cute. I think it's adorable. Yeah, the flavor text is really fun. Who needs on this an one. iPhone? No, not me. Just be with the trees. All right, this one is definitely in my top three. We have a fierce guardianship. Now, Narsa is just crushing it in this card. Really, really cool. I enjoyed this one a lot. Um, it seems like she's kind of like the hero of the story, kind of having her moment. And I was looking to see if there was anybody recognizable in the back, but it just kind of seems like she's out here saving people. She's out here saving lives. She's out here saving lives. Queen energy. This is a classic. Everybody's afraid of the blue player having a fierce guardianship, right? Especially if we have our commanders out. So I think it's really cool that this got reprinted in this way and the art for it is really, really beautiful. It tells like a story in this. This is really kind of like art that I like when there's this something going on and you really like, like I said, there's certain cards you can stare at it all day and like the more you look at it, the more you start to pick out from it. Yeah. 
I and think, that's one of them. I think Narsa has become my favorite planeswalker, and like I've just been collecting cards for her, so this is gonna go right into my deck. It's for us. It is. This is my favorite dragon, the Balefire dragon. Mm -hmm. That's a Kalia staple for yep. me. Um, any dragon deck, really. And connecting with a Balefire dragon is just nothing like it. It is such a good card. It is absolutely a staple for Kalia. Uh, and one that when we saw this, we were like, yeah, very excited mm -hmm. about this one. I, and that's going right in my deck. And yeah. I love how they once again did this whole 3D effect where they have like the top of the card going over to where the uh, like text box is. The lower text box has the fire going into it. You can still read the card, but it still has like, it's it almost looks multi-dimensional. I really like the color for the fire as well, like it, because it is multi-dimensional. It has a lot of, I don't know, it feels more whimsical than just a general fire. Well, like it's, it's Scott Fisher, yeah. Um, and we shouldn't be surprised, it's Scott Fisher. It's Scott Fisher. Yeah, it's very good. <laughs> we got the Treasure Nabber. It's a good little uh, goblin rogue and I, I just think this is a good thing for goblins. We like goblins. We love goblins. Right, so we have him. This is great for some artifact stuff and a card that I think is absolutely worth picking up as well. This card I thought was really, really cool and we're gonna showcase it in a second, but one of my favorite things I did on here is this little piece into the text box. We've been talking a lot about the text box today and how we like when it's a little transparent and we can see the card and we can see the full grasp of the art. The way that this kind of flows over it, it just feels like it's telling a story and it feels like you're casting the spell, which I think is really, really cool. It's got really beautiful flavor text and the background on here is, is really gorgeous. So I, I think it's a fun and different kind of style. I think it's awesome. I also love these cards that say like, if you control a commander, mm -hmm. it just gives you more incentive to play it in your commander deck. It's mm -hmm. a better card when it's in commander. So it's like that they got around to, you know, doing stuff like that. You have these really powerful cards, like your Fierce Guardianship. That yeah. Become even more powerful if you have your commander out. So this next one is Stormtown Artist. I feel like this is, again, a great deck for a lot of is it things. Um, and in general, like he is just a great card. And he was like before a little like dwarven, uh, gingery man with a mustache and super cute. So this art is really, really fun. And I enjoy this. Again, great card. It's got Magecraft and it's for the instant and sorcery spells. So whenever you cast or copy one, you make some treasure. It gets plus one for each artifact you control. You know what it does, it's a staple. So yeah. this one I was really excited about. Yeah, me um, too. It's going right in my Krark. Yeah, I was gonna, it's in my Nero deck. So this is one I'm, I think we're both gonna be really happy with. And just another great mana dork. We have an Elvish Mystic. Uh, this art is beautiful. I'm never gonna complain about a mana dork being put into magic in general. No way. Uh, this is one that I think is going to be a lot of people's favorites just because the full art is really beautiful and I really enjoy again even like the text box and everything with this one too so no I know this one's gorgeous mm -hmm. so next are two classic commander cards this cyclonic rift I believe is the first time we've had this kind of textured foil which is really cool uh, this is a card you either love to see or you hate to see I love table. to cast it and I hate getting ripped in yep that is a hundred percent exactly how I feel and especially because I feel like people forget that it also has the single use thing for two mana which is very good yeah this is a staple I feel like if you're a blue player, you're playing this card, it's just too good not to. And I really love the way that this looks. I think it's such a beautiful card in general. I love this art, but especially with like the texture. The foiling on it? Yeah. yeah. The it's textured really foil fun. looks like glitter. It's really cool. It does look like glitter. We love glitter. I love glitter. <laughs> I am a glitter princess mm -hmm. and I love it. This next one, again, is one that you either love to see or I love see. to see it. I, I do. love Swathering Tithe. You know what? I'm super happy to not pay two mana so you can have a treasure. Thank you. Right? I want the treasure. It's a great card. Again, staple. I feel like uh, most people are playing this in a way if they can, if they want to. Um, this art is, again, a classic. Uh, we got some recent art of Smothering Tithe, but I feel like this is always the classic one. This is always the one that I gravitate towards the most. And this looks really pretty with the foiling. It does. Yeah. It's all glittery and it should be. Oh. Making money. I love it. Kind of the face card for this set, I would say, in general, is the Jeweled Lotus. Jeweled Lotus. Yeah, I, broken. yeah I always wanted a Jeweled Lotus and it was a hard card to get, so I was very excited when we pulled this out of here. Uh, and I'm hoping maybe We'll get lucky with your box and get one of the really cool arts Maybe, for this. maybe manifesting it. But either way, this is one of the best cards in Commander. It is super, super fun. It's really changed the way that the game is played, I think. And uh, yeah, I was happy to get this and one that I will be treasuring for sure. Another card that I was very excited to see is Finale of Devastation. This card is so good. It is super, super good. Um, it gets played a lot in CDH, obviously, and I 
don't know if you've seen it too much in casual, would you say? Um, I don't see that a lot in casual too, yeah. too much. That's more of a CDH card. It's definitely like a big CDH card and there is an alternative art for this as well, which is kind of a big deal because we've been seeing this dinosaur art. It's a good card. It lets you get some stuff out of your library, which is really what you need. You can make your creature feel big and give them haste. And yeah, I'm just really stoked to see this card. I think it's an important one and I'm happy that it's in the set. We have an extra turn card spell. This is a really classic one too. And I feel like a lot of people play it in general. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know if it's had a reprint in a long time. When I was looking this up, I didn't really see anything for it. Uh, but I think this is a big deal. It is a big deal. And I love the art for it. It's a very classic art for a capture of uh, Jing Zhao, is that you say it? Yeah, mm -hmm. capture of Jing Zhao. So I'm really stoked for this. I love extra turns. I know you do. You That is true. So <laughs> one I'm very excited for as well. Loyal Retainers is a card that I think gets slept on sometimes. It's a really, really good card. Uh, this one, I enjoy this art for this. It's a new art we have for it. Uh, you can sack Loyal Retainers and return target legendary card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Activate only during your turn before attackers are declared. Which is great because it's in a white card. It's a white card. White cards don't get enough love. We're starting to do more and more in sets, I think, but this is like an OG card that people were like really, really about. Yeah. Um, so I love Loyal Retainers. I think this is a good addition for this as well. Personal Tutor. This is a new art for it and it's one of the cutest arts I've ever seen. We're gonna take a closer look at this. So, Personal Tutor's art before, great. Not as cute as this though. Look at this little baby it's a owl. Little owl, he's reading a little book. It's so fun, and the way that um, there's like sorcery being casted, right? It's a sorcery, perfect. The way that everything looks in here, it looks like little wings. It's really, really fun, and I love what they did with this. I think this was like a huge hit for me. I'm really, really excited about this card. One that we both play a lot. Demonic Tutor is back, and it also has an alternative art that is super, super cool. I. I think we both use this card a lot. I'm always tooting. Always rooting and tooting with the tutors. Tootin'. And uh, the good thing about, you know, the black tutors is that we don't have to reveal what we're tooting. No. No? No. So we just do the thing. But Demonic Tutor, again, stable, super happy to see it back. Super happy with the new art for that as well. Uh, and I'm excited to eventually draft the set and play it and maybe get all these spicy cards while we play it. What would you tutor for? I don't know. Probably the deflecting swan. Probably the, the, the horsemanship part. <laughs> <laughs> Another white staple, we have Grand Abolisher. Again, also has an alternative art, which is super cool. Uh, but in general, Grand Abolisher is a very good card. It is a very good card to play uh, in CDH. It's a good card in general to protect yourself and your board state and cast spells. And this is a card I think really needed a reprint, so I'm happy to see that back as well. He's abolishing. Yeah. Oh Lord, he's I love abolishing. the new art for this. The new art for this, I feel like is a very good homage to this as well, um, because we did see a reprint of it recently, but the new reprint for Grand Abolisher with Commander Masters is like super, super cool. I think you'll enjoy it. Back with the board wipes. Back with the board wipes, Toxic Deluge. Good card. Good card, great card. Happy to open that. Yeah. Black spell, uh, in general, black gets to do a lot of the destroying. Uh, a lot of the fun, I think, board whips are in black in general, so I'm really excited about this. Um, and I know that this is a big deal to a lot of people, so I'm happy to see this back. Maelstrom Wanderer, this is a card that I feel like gets talked about often. Uh, I have never played at the table, but it has one of those beautiful profile cards that we were talking about earlier, where it makes me want to play it. Um, and this, it cascades. It cascades, you I love, love cascading. cascading. Yeah, so it gives all of your creatures haste. Um, it's a seven five, and it is in teamer with five men on top of it. It is so good. It is a scary card, and I feel like you would love it because it cascades and everything gets haste and you can just Beat face. That's my favorite thing to do. It is your favorite Cascade thing to do. into more stuff. Yeah. So we have the pre-cons here. Uh, this, every time a new set comes out, I usually pick up one, two, or all four of the pre-cons, and I'm very excited that we have them here in front of us. When it was spoiled, I knew which one you were gonna pick, but- You already know I'm gonna yeah. get the slivers. Yeah. yeah, so I'm stoked on slivers. I think the art for this is one of the coolest sliver arts I've ever seen. Absolutely. Um, I know that you enjoy playing them, and I think this pre-con's gonna be really cool. Is it five color? Two? Yes. Five color, great. I love that. Um, and I know there's an alternative uh, card for each of these that you can play instead of the main one. I know yep. you play the stars, but this card is very cool too. And it's something I would consider checking out for the deck. Um, is there anything 
that you're excited for for this deck. We haven't got a chance to look at them yet. We haven't even gotten to open the pre-cons yet, but we're going to be tearing these open very soon. Uh, I'm super excited about the slivers. I always love playing a sliver deck, and there's also Eldrazi's, which is mm -hmm. really cool. We got the Planeswalker Party. We've got Enchantress stuff over here. Uh, I think what's awesome about these kind of precons is they're all pretty powerful, and these are precons I'm probably not even going to tinker with. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to upgrade them. I'm going to put them all in nice sleeves in deck boxes and just jam these as is. Cause yes. Sometimes it's fun to just play them as they are. I agree with that too. There's uh, a lot to be said for like how precons have grown in general, and I think that you and I always gravitate towards like a type of deck, and we have fun with like the Eldrazi or the Slivers. Yes. Um, out of this, I think I'm most excited for these Enchantress ones. I think that set is gonna be really cool. I haven't played those colors together, so I'm excited to kind of mess around with that. I'm also a big fan of Planeswalkers, you know that, so I think this deck is very cool as well. Uh, we are planning on playing with all four of them soon, and you might catch a very cool episode for that. Uh, but if you want to, you know, see them in action in general, you could do that. Um, you can check out the episode. I don't think there's any reason to really upgrade these because I feel like the perfect is, again, you can do that if you would like to, but I am been really happy with the pre-cons lately and I think these are gonna be really fun to play. So I'm excited to see the new Eldrazi too. I know, so let's pick three of our favorite cards that we've opened so far. Okay. And our favorite pre-con. Okay. Just based off of looks on the pre-cons. Okay. We don't know what's in them yet. So this is my favorite pre-con. I was gonna say, I wonder what Tori will pick. Yeah, of course it's the Slivers. It's the Slivers. It's the it's Sliver Grave Mother. Sliver Swarm, that's speaking my language. Yeah. I love her, she looks great. I think the Enchantress is the one I'm looking forward to playing the, uh, I think the Enchantress is the one I'm looking forward to playing the most. Uh, first off, she looks awesome. <laughs> she does look it's, awesome. It's a demigod, even the card that um, you can play instead of the main commander in this is super, super cool. I tend to like enchantment decks and yeah. I feel like the color identity is something that I would really like to enjoy uh, and have fun playing in general. So this one I'm excited for, but I also think the Aldrazi might be my favorite. It's really hard to pick one. I feel like I they're, think all, they're all your favorites. Yeah, yeah, they're all your favorites except for the slivers, which belong to you, a humble, D evil person like myself <laughs> who likes to play worms. It's all it's day. like asking someone to pick their favorite kid. You can't. I want them all. This is my favorite kid. Yeah, I they're all the mine. kid that plays with the bugs. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are the top three cards for you that you opened today? So out of what I've opened, I would have to say I'm a big fan of the Fierce Guardianship. Again, Narset has become my favorite Planeswalker. I think this art is really fun. The flavor text is good. And again, we've been talking about that text box all day. It just looks really beautiful. I'm also a fan of the Personal Tutor. I think this art is super cute. Um, I had a hard time picking between this and Slimefoot because I think those were both really great arts for the set, but I enjoy this card and I'm happy that it has a new look. And my top card has to be the Deflecting Swap. This is the card I audibly gasped for when I saw it. Um, and I just love his little claw on top of it. Everything about it is perfect. So this is one I really am excited to throw into my deck as well. What did you enjoy the most? So my top three cards were the Smothering Tithe with mm -hmm. the beautiful new like etched foil look. Mm -hmm. I just think that's so classic looking and pretty. If I could have all of my cards look like this, I totally would. Uh, Balefire Dragon, Full Art Balefire Dragon is just amazing. And I think Balefire Dragon is probably my favorite dragon in all of Magic, so I love this reprint. It I was, love the Full Art, yeah. it's my favorite. It was really meant for you. And my favorite card in this set, believe it or not, is the Kai Car. Mm. I love this Kai Car. I love the Full Art, I love the foiling, I love the use of color, it's photorealism, it's just Beautiful. I yeah. think this card is just beautiful. I think popping this in your command zone, or if you, you know, put all your commander decks in like boulder cases and you have the commander out front, this just looks awesome. Yeah. So this is my favorite card. It's a really good display, I think, in general. And I, again, those types of cards make me want to build a deck with them because it feels like it has so much personality. And I feel like that's something commander players aim for is having a deck with personality. Yep. So definitely, I'm going to make this deck. Yeah. My silly goose deck. Really fun. Thank you again to Wizards of the Coast for sending us these to look at. We had a good selection of pre-cons that we're excited to play. We got some really cool cards from the set and some stuff I'm really excited to try out. Absolutely. And if you saw any cards that you liked or want to check out these pre-cons, keep your eyes peeled for the release date and where to buy them because I can tell that these are going to be very popular and last very long because they look just awesome. Yeah. And they look like timeless products too, which I'm excited about. I love something that I can buy and will be used 
forever and that's exactly what these pre-cons are to me so definitely picking those up i think they're also going to be really fun uh for pre-release to play at your lgs i think they're gonna be really fun to draft with your friends i think uh the collector's boosters are some of the coolest cards in general and the foiling is really nice i think i, I just think they're beautiful i think these are really beautiful cards i'm very excited for them and i'm excited to slot them into my old decks and make new ones Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, we are part of the MTG Ambassador Program, which means we will be bringing more videos like this or other videos uh, every month, which is really exciting for us. And if you have any suggestions for what you'd like to see with future sets, or uh, we're really big on art and that tends yes. to be the thing we talk about, but maybe you'll see more of these type of videos in the future. Yeah, definitely. Be yeah. sure to keep up with our content to see more cool stuff that Witches is putting out. And thank you for stopping by and watching today.